creating over 35 original Pikmin enemy designs based on comments and ideas. Basically, some people subscribed and commented, and then I ended up making drawings for them like the one you're seeing on screen right now. This prog remembers what it had once lost. And as such, one of its main defining features is the fact that it creates Gloom Mamudas. This is only one of its attacks. These Mamudas function as regular ones, but since they're made out of Gloom, they end up killing the Pikmin when they go to hit them. The other defining features that this prog has in compared to the other one is the fact that it has a Gloom Laser Beam on top of all these standard prog attacks. And since this colossal creature is the queen or king of all progs, it has a few of those smoky boys always wandering with it. I had a few names in mind for this creature, like the Midnight Prog, but I decided to go for the most intimidating one, the Nightmare Prog. And it's honestly just a fitting name for this unfortunate creature who only dreams of becoming Mamuda. Up next, we have a enemy that's a little bit more happy, and that is the Chopping Dirigi Bug, a chef version of the original. This fellow doesn't draw bombs, but instead picks up Pikmin and slams them against its pot, creating a relevant type explosion. So if you go in with only red Pikmin, that means he would only be able to make fire explosions. But if you let him cook with a mixed squad, you better be careful. Now we have three submissions, all from one person, which brings me to say that you can always see the names of everyone who submits an idea in the bottom left corner of the screen. Continuing on, the first submission from this person is the Chomping Longlegs. This fellow does less stomping and more, well, chomping, where it slams its head against the ground trying to eat Pikmin. It will often leave its mouth open when it's above the ground. This will leave its tongue exposed, allowing you to attack it. Just be sure to whistle your Pikmin before it chomps again. The second entry from this person that also has a drawing is the fog board, a bull board essentially mixed with a wraith. It's slower and pretty weak, but it makes up for this by summoning smaller fog creatures that attack you. Take out the fog board before you get overwhelmed. Third up, we have the Jelly Vake, which unlike other jelly floats, doesn't actually suck up Pikmin and instead floats around trying to attract Pikmin to its glowing lights. Unattended Pikmin will end up trying to jump and grab it, and if that happens, the Jelly Vake ends up eating them, essentially immediately. While this enemy is a menace to your squad, it's pretty easy to defeat just like any standard jelly float. The second wraith of this video is the Toxic Wraith. This terrifying creature slowly crawls its way towards you, slamming its giant rollers one after the other, leaving echoes in the cave so you can pretty much tell where it is at all times. It's supposed to have a Bulborb skull on, but then I realized that Bulborb skulls don't have eye sockets, so it'd just be a smooth forehead and a mouth. Anyways, I tried putting on a regular skull, and it, it honestly ended up looking like nightmare fuel, so I removed it. Besides that though, the Toxic Wraith doesn't have any real defining attacks or features, it's essentially just going to chase you like the standard watery. And once it's defeated, the pillars break, and it ends up seeping into the ground. Its main defining feature though is once it's dead, if you end up going directly over its body before it's completely dissolved into the ground, the wooden sticks that are protruding out of its back will actually shoot up and impale Pikmin. So you just have to wait a little bit for that to completely dissolve. Now we have another big enemy, and that is the Mud Chucker, which is essentially the Grub Chucker, but bigger. It only lurks around in muddy areas and it chucks mud at you, which causes pretty much any Pikmin type to go crazy except for maybe Glow Pikmin. The only way to really defeat it is with Wing Pikmin. I guess you could also freeze the mud and then just break it. Our next enemy is kind of a half-breed, and that is the Burrowing Pincer Bug. This enemy has a pretty unique attack. Since it digs a hole in the ground and it creates a little sand vortex where the Pikmin can slip in, kind of like one of the bosses from Pikmin 3. If they end up slipping in, they'll get eaten. This bug does get tired after spinning around creating its sand vortex though, in which case it will open its weak back to cool off. This is obviously your opportunity to strike. An additional burrowing type of enemy is up next, and that is the Treasure Hermit, only it burrows inside treasures. And I lost the time lapse for this enemy, sorry about that. Anyways, it pretends to be a treasure like I said since it burrows inside of it. And if you end up not noticing this and trying to pick it up, it will end up eating some of your Pikmin. To avoid this, you can try and bait it just like any other crab in the regular Pikmin game, or you can rush it with Ochi which will force it to come out and then you can go and fight it. Another similar enemy is the Fool's Food. It's essentially exactly the same, only it's a fruit and it's more ingrained into the object rather than the crab that has burrowed into it. This is more of like a little parasitic guy that has become part of the food and defeating it is pretty much exactly the same as the previous enemy. It's just significantly smaller and 
weaker. The second prog of this video is the fiery prog. This enemy also had a drawing submission done with it, and like I normally do for drawing submissions, I remade it in my own style. I also added the meme blue Pikmin in the bottom left corner, who's in danger. As for mechanics, this enemy is essentially impossible to defeat if you're not using anything that isn't fire resistant. Its attacks are pretty much standard like any smoky prog, but fire. Our following enemy is Ochi, but a cat. And this is called the Curious Poss Water. This enemy is not aggressive to your Pikmin or your captain. In fact, it will completely ignore your Pikmin and your captain. Ochi, on the other hand, it will target him like crazy. This enemy is essentially an Ochi or dog repellent, because it would also attack Moss. It is larger than both of them, but smaller than the ancient Sirehound. And its mechanic is similar to Moss when she's in the hero's hideaway, where you can defeat it, but it will get back up after a while. Nenchaku, which means sticky in Japanese, is our next enemy submission, where somebody also ended up drawing it. This enemy is basically a slime that roams around the map collecting objects and food that get stuck inside of it. It slowly digests certain things like Pikmin, but treasures and whatnot remain lodged in it, so you'll have to defeat this enemy in order to reclaim the treasures that get stuck. Another slimy friend is the Hairy Slurker. If you haven't guessed it, this is also a slime, and I also forgot to record the time lapse for this, which kind of sucks. This enemy is more aggressive than the previous slime, since this one actually goes after your Pikmin. When it grabs them, it ends up putting them under the cup, and it starts to dissolve them. This cup is pretty durable, but it can be broken. However, it takes a long time due to its large health pool. Once the cup is broken though, you can attack the Slurker and defeat it very easily. If you want to actually shorten the process, you can use your pink Pikmin to grab its pink hairs, removing the protective shell which leaves the weak slime vulnerable and you can take it down in no time. Another drawing for a spider enemy in Pikmin, we have the Dandily Longlegs. Now this fellow is actually passive and peaceful in its dandelion form. However, if you pluck off its seeds, it will become enraged where a flower similar to the sunflower appears and it ends up lobbing seeds at you. There is a second drawing submitted with this enemy in its enraged form that I unfortunately didn't end up making, but hopefully the original submitter likes the dandelion version that I ended up drawing. I did end up drawing this unnamed fellow though, which was also submitted by the same person. It is now named the Fluffy Sprinkler. This enemy likes to fly near and above water, and when it sees Pikmin, it will pick up the water in its fluff and spin around everywhere, shooting water. Similar to the monster pump from Pikmin 2. However, the creature spinning around like crazy will cause it to get dizzy, which leads to an easy attack phase. Squills and squeals are up. Well, the squill is. This is an enemy that is essentially a roly-poly mixed with a tire. This fellow is about the size of a captain, and when they end up seeing one, they'll roll up and charge at the captain. Most of the Pikmin in its path will either get knocked away or crushed. After its first roll, it will turn around and continue to try charging at the captain until the captain dies. This enemy is weak in between its rolls since it has to uncurl itself to orient itself for its next attack. During this time, you can throw a Pikmin on its back, causing it to flip over. As for the squeal, well, that's the bigger boss version. I didn't end up drawing it since I only did one drawing per text entry. However, if you want to read more about it, you can find it on my art page where I post all the drawings you're seeing right now for free. So you can go over there and download any of them that you like, and you can also read the original comments. Reminding you about this also reminds me to tell you to subscribe if you haven't already since there are more videos like this on my channel and there are more to come. Now we have Chilling Longlegs. I did something a little different for this one. I inverted the long legs as regular type of build, which I personally like. This boss is pretty simple from a design standpoint, but it does also have some unique gimmicks and mechanics. It lives in cold areas, like freezing cold areas similar to the ones in Pikmin 4. And like the Snowflake Fluttertail, you have to use these stoves around the room in order to defrost the boss in order to deal damage to it. As the fight goes on, the snow globe becomes more and more cracked, causing more snow to be released from the globe and in turn, making the area more dangerous, where stuff like icicles fall from the sky. These icicles are a little bit different than the ones in Pikmin 4 though. These are too cold to actually break. The only time they'll actually shatter is if Chilling Longlegs ends up stepping on them and crushing them. This mechanic is done in this way so that the arena actually dynamically changes as the boss fight progresses. A Puffy Blowhog variant is up next, and that is the Puffy Cedar. This enemy likes to stay out of range from the majority of Pikmin types and snipe you with its seeds. These don't actually kill, but they can cause Danduri issues. 
If you don't have yellow or wing pikmin in order to attack it, you can throw any item from your backpack and the blowhog will float down to investigate, allowing you to attack it with any type. Puffamar is our next puffy enemy, but it's a puff stool rather than a puffy blowhog. It will convert your pikmin into puffmen and attempt to outdanduri you, which I completely forgot to mention where you would fight it. You would fight this in a Danduri battle, where its entire gimmick is that it tries to steal your Pikmin to create more Puffmen in order to beat you in this challenge. The Stumpler is another plant type enemy, and is basically a Bulborb if a Bulborb was a log. It pretends to be a tree stump in the ground until you get too close. From there, it emerges out of the ground. It has two attacks that it can do on you. It can either eat your Pikmin like all Bulborbs do, or it has a deflowering attack where it slams its head against the ground, creating mini deflowering shockwaves. Also, it will knock over anything that is too close. Our next enemy also has a little bit of plants with it, and that's the Turt Maestro. This turtle is completely harmless and does not actually attack or eat Pikmin. It instead hypnotizes them. This is done with its music where it plays the instruments on its back, it does a little bit of a sidestep kind of dance, and it causes mist to come out, which is a actual blue mist. It's kind of like the groovy gas, but weaker. Any hypnotized Pikmin can easily be reclaimed by whistling them, hence why it's a weaker version of the groovy gas. This turtle also doesn't like Pikmin getting eaten, and it will attack anything that tries to eat its Pikmin that are currently under its control. It does this by simply crushing smaller enemies or ramming into larger ones like bulborbs. The next plant-related enemy had a lot of submissions for it, or at least something that was kind of along the lines of a Venus flytrap creature. I ended up merging the names and calling it the Watering Pickstalker. The enemy starts off as wilted leaves on the ground, and when you get close to them, it reveals its true form. Here, this carnivorous plant has a few attacks. One where it will snap at you chomping up a few pigments and the other, it will spray at you a mix of two things, either a poisonous acid that is lethal to non-white Pikmin, or it will spray water at you. This is entirely dependent on the location, so if it's in a desolate place, expect the acid. This massive plant also places numerous traps around it. Now these traps take time to digest anything caught in it, but there are a lot of them, so you have to be careful where you're walking. There are two ways to defeat this enemy. The first one where you can attack the main body, which is dangerous due to the previous three attacks that I've mentioned. Or, the second way to fight it is you can actually allow one of the traps on the ground to trap you and start the digesting process. Now the digesting process isn't immediate. It actually ends up taking longer the more Pikmin you have in your squad, or I should say the more Pikmin that get trapped inside there. During this time, you can actually attack the creature from the inside of the trap dealing massive damage to it and eventually escaping the trap. You can continue doing this until the boss actually ends up dying. And continuing on with the plant-based enemies, but this one's more watery, it is the Titan Lily Lurker. This one had two submissions that were pretty different design-wise, but functioned similarly, so I merged them. This enemy ends up floating in water, pretending to be a lily pad. If you hop on it, it will eat a large amount of Pikmin and cause the rest to fall in the water. You can easily tell if this is a fake and not an actual lily pad since it's constantly bobbing up and down slightly in the water. The best way to take this out is with blue Pikmin from underneath. Onto another water related enemy, we have the Weedy Sea Legs. This boss idea also had a few submitters, one that even drew it. This monster of a spider is always in shallow water, and every time it stomps, it creates waves. Not only that, but it can create bubbles. It does so when you will hear a large ship horn sound, and then it will firmly stomp and place one of its legs in the ground, or I guess in the water, and from here it starts blowing bubbles with that leg. The bubbles go everywhere, so you have to steer clear because you can get a lot of Pikmin trapped in there and lose a lot of your forces. Pikmin don't die in bubbles, but you just won't be able to really control them. And if those two attacks weren't enough, it also has its most devastating one, the anchor. This is where you will hear a large ship horn sound. And when this happens, it will drop the anchor and crush anything underneath. Fighting this enemy is like fighting any of the other long legs. It's just that this sea fellow has a few gimmicks and tricks up its sleeve. The stony pace fish is another aquatic enemy. This fish is covered in a bunch of waxy goop, which causes this fish to be a pretty slow swimmer. Despite that though, it still has formidable offense and defense. Its offense is pretty clear since it's a large fish that can eat Pikmin. And its defense is the wax, which can cause Pikmin to get stuck in it. The best way to deal with this fish is to actually lead it on land, 
where it will chase you and then the air will cause the slime to drape over the fish and dry, allowing you to easily damage it where it can't really put up a fight. And rolling around at the speed of sound, we have the Rolling Snee Boodle. This bad boy has a body where it rolls up like a wheel and then it uses its mandible-like arms to push itself forward, crushing any Pikmin in its path. It will also rush at you and snatch up any Pikmin with its mandibles. Kind of similar to the roly-poly enemies from earlier, but it was pretty different design-wise, so I kind of wanted to include it. From ground to air, we have the Emperor Spectralid. A butterfly with two big wings and two small wings. But the smaller wings are actually just a smaller Spectralid that it carries in order to cover its weak spot. Now, this Emperor is passive, but if you end up attacking any of the regular Spectralids following it, it will attack. Its attacks comprise of two things, one which is a wind gust where it will flap its wings and deflower any Pikmin in its path as well as knock them away. It also has another method where it will use its arms to pick up Pikmin and throw them, which will normally plant them into the ground. The Emperor Spectralid doesn't have much health, but it is pretty quick and you also don't really have a reason to fight it so it's kind of just one of those passive roaming enemies like a Muda. Up next we have three drawing submissions all from the same person. And for these, I actually didn't end up drawing them, but instead I'm going to show the originals because I love these designs. First up, we have the Dreadborb. This enemy has two versions of the Jumble Bulborb's chomping attack. One where it does the similar animation, but it attacks with its knife head. And the other is pretty much just the standard chomping attack, only it doesn't trip at the end. Its other form of attack is where it will jump up and tuck in its legs and then start digging in which case it will emerge out of a random location in the wall or in the ground, and the Dreadborg continues to repeat this process until it gets tired and dizzy. The final attack up this thing's sleeve is the Roar, which disorients Pikmin and causes some small dwarf versions of itself to fall from the ceiling. These mini versions are just slightly stronger than a standard dwarf Bulborg. As for taking this down, you can obviously take advantage of when it gets dizzy after its attack digging phase, or if you're very clever, you can use two captains to kind of go around it and attack it, since from the front it's pretty dangerous due to its knife attack. The Revolving Long Legs. Attacking this enemy's body does nothing to it. You instead have to take out all four legs, causing it to fall to the ground. Once this happens, it will start spinning around using its spin top like a body. Keep your distance and bait it to crash into a wall. Crashing into a wall won't stop it, but instead will cause rocks to fall from the sky, which you can then bait it under, and these will crush it, dealing a little bit of damage and stopping it from spinning. Once this happens, its body will also open up, kind of like a pearly clam clam, and then you can damage it, and then obviously it will get back up and you can repeat the process. The Steaming Long Legs. Any attack from the outside will cause the boss to block it with its shield-like legs, but the metal on this enemy is steaming hot, so any Pikmin attacking its shields will burn, apart from reds of course. To actually deal damage, you need to go underneath it, in between all of its legs, and throw a Pikmin at the main body, which also happens to be less hot than the rest of it, allowing for any Pikmin type to attack it. This enemy's attacks comprise of a few things, the first being a slow firing gun that leaves fire puddles, and large flamethrower holes that shoot fire inwards, which you can see as the three lights on each of the legs. When you see steam coming out of one of these three holes, just be sure to run away or else you're gonna get roasted. This boss has three levels of aggression, yellow, white, and blue. Each one is harder than the last. This is because the boss gets closer and closer to death and ends up turning up the heat more and more, creating larger and hotter fire attacks. And those are the three submissions from this person. Again, I didn't make my own drawings, but I do plan on making something for the submitter. Another gun enemy is up next, and that is the Hunting Groink. This is essentially a Sniper Gatling Groink. It likes to keep its distance and snipe from afar. Because of this, the Sniper's rate of fire is much slower than a standard Gatling Groink. This enemy will always go for the most flashy target, so leaving out a captain as a bait is a good idea. When you're up close, you can attack its main body, dealing a little bit of damage here and there. But like Bulborbs, you can also throw Pikmin at its eyes, which will confuse it and cause your Pikmin to deal more damage to it, allowing it to die faster. This does have an added risk though, since when you're attacking its eyes, it will fire like crazy. Be careful of that. The Assassin Dweevil, a close relative to the Titan Dweevil. 
It has a similar build, only it's slightly shorter. Its most defining feature is the use of the spider-like silk that it uses to protect its head, along with holding a circular treasure. It also has a pretty wide range of attacks using this one singular treasure, from making it roll around with the string attached to it, slamming it on the ground, crushing anything underneath, or even lobbing the ball. During any of these attacks, the ball will occasionally be stationary on the ground, in which case you can get the player to break the silk string that's attached to the ball, and in doing so, you also remove the protective silk hood on top of the boss, allowing you to deal damage to it. And for our last four entries, we had four drawing submissions. First up is the Blaton, a humanoid wraith-like creature. If you attack it, it actually ends up spitting out a Pikmin type, which is a silver goop Pikmin. Defining what those Pikmin actually do is for another video. Anyway, to defeat this enemy, you have to face it in a Danduri battle. During this battle, you can attack the Blaton, which will cause it to spit out more silver Pikmin, giving it an edge in numbers. However, this can also stun the Blaton, which allows you to out Danduri it since it'll be sitting there doing nothing. Once you defeat this, a silver onion is provided, allowing you to keep the Pikmin that are created and unlock the new Pikmin type. The Granite Grinder. This behemoth is essentially rocks that have come to life, rolling around the area and crushing anything that's unfortunate enough to be in its path. Its weak point is its plant-like eye in the middle of it. You can attack it during its stationary moments and take it down. It does have a large health pool and its attacks of rolling around is pretty lethal, so be careful. The Two-Headed Armored Mantid. This dynamic duo uses one to eat Pikmin and the other to shoot poison. The poison can be quick shots or a larger one that is slower firing that creates a ring of poison kind of like the Smoky Frog's ring projectile attack but not as deadly. The two blades that it has on the front are mainly for show. They're not used in any form of attack, but they can be used to brush off any Pikmin that latch onto its weak belly. In order to defeat this enemy, you can attack its head until it becomes red. Be careful though, because the more red the head becomes, the more aggressive the Mantid gets. Once both heads are red, your enemy is as good as dead since it will get stunned and you can attack the belly and take this thing out. The Spiky Wally Hop. And this guy is like a Wally Hop, but he has the added mechanics of the spikes. These can obviously slash and impale Pikmin, but they also have a defining feature, which is where they're actually poisonous as well. If you throw any Pikmin and try to attack this fellow, they're gonna get poisoned. Apart from white Pikmin, of course. And for our final enemy, we have the Rammer Snaggery. This bird has two forms of attack. The first is the most troublesome, since it can catch you off guard. It moves underground, but unlike the regular snagger where it just kind of appears and reappears somewhere else, you can actually see a dirt mound above where it is at all times. If you end up spawning this dirt mound, you can see it slowly and slowly getting closer to you until it will emerge out of the ground and eat any Pikmin nearby. However, once it does this and gets out of the ground, it will come out completely like the pileated snagger. From here, it will hop around and try to do a ram kind of dive attack where it will snatch up any Pikmin and swallow them if they happen to be in its path. To counter this, you can either rush the dirt mound with Ochi or with your other Pikmin before it actually ends up emerging, stunning it. Or when it's out of the ground hopping around, you can get it to ram into a wall which will also cause it to get stunned. There you have it, over 35 enemies in one video. Remember to sub, like, and comment which one your favorite was.